we have already covered 95% of your exam material. So that means that you can answer 95% of the questions. Please do not interrupt me while I am talking. I have already set your exam and it is not a stroll down Mary Lane. So please prepare, make sure that you prepare. Now a few of you have visited my office and asked me <laughs> you have asked me to re to revisit certain topics, including cell membrane. So we are going to be looking at that today. We are going to be revising that. So I would like you to take out your textbooks and take to page number 15. Cinquenta. Okay, so we're going to be starting. Cell membranes. Can anybody tell me the structure of the cell membrane? What structure? How does it look? We are going to, you know, discuss one for another, talk one for another. So the first question is, can anybody tell me the structure of the cell membrane? There are also other structures in the wall, like cholesterol, peripheral proteins, integral proteins, glycolipids, and glycoproteins. Are these citizens of your kingdom? How are they allowed to enter here freely? They are entering freely through the process of simple diffusion. They are small but important to a kingdom. They are gases, water molecules, lipids, lipid soluble molecules, and small non charged molecules. Oh, I know this guy. 
Yes, he is actually. He's a unicorn. One of my main protein carriers. He's tasked with transporting one molecule at a time. His name is Group 1. There are two others known as simport and antiport, and their job is facilitated diffusion of larger molecules such as ions, amino acids, small water soluble molecules, and water in either the same or opposite direction at the same time. And some of us are especially tasked with transporting sugars like you. But mommy, do not forget that the carrier proteins can only transport things inside the wall if its concentration is lower inside than outside. I think that means it functions according to concentration. This is very important for a kingdom. Where molecules are transported in and out of the cell using ATP. This one in particular is known as the sodium potassium pump. He is known as Agent P. He specializes in cation transport. That guy over there is Agent F. He deals with proton pumping complexes. The one next to him is Agent A and he transports an ion while Agent V, who is not here at at the wall deals with vacuole and lysosomes. Whoa, everything here is so organized. But wait, that thing over there looks like a light bulb. I don't expect there to be functioning lights and other electrical looking items and stuff like that. <laughs> Where I'm from, we use electricity for that. How do you all do it? Well, we have electricity too, but ours is as a result of something called membrane potential which is the potential difference between the inside of the wall and the surrounding environment outside. You see Kayla, there needs to be a certain amount of sodium and potassium ions on either side of the wall to ensure that there is electricity pouring our kingdom. This assists with the transport of molecules into and out of the cell. Once this ordered balance is maintained, our kingdom will continue to function properly. And this is why we had Agent P exchanging the three sodium for the two potassium ions. Why can't you just carry the glucose via secondary active transport like, like the other SGLT ones? All you have to do is just use the energy gradient created by the sodium potassium pump and transport the glucose with the sodium. So all you're doing is just reach out. Queen. Your Majesty. Yes, what is it? We have a problem outside. What is it? SGLT1. Five and two. That co-transporter, you already causes us trouble with glucose galactose malabsorption. Alright, Revelia, take care of your mother. Let's go. Transport out of the kingdom. I will go and see what is happening.
the membrane of animal cells. Basically, they are arranged in a fluid mosaic model with very structural and a very dynamic nature. We mentioned facilitating diffusion, simple diffusion, and, and how it occurs through the cell membrane. And we discussed carrier proteins. There are various classes, uniports, simports, and antiports, and how they work. We, we, we discussed a very important carrier protein. Can anybody tell me an example of a carrier protein? The little one. The little one. And what does it transport? Glucose. Very good. And we also looked at ATP driven active transport, ATP dependent higher form classes like P, D, A, and F. We also looked at the sodium potassium pump. Can anybody tell me how many sodium are sent across the membrane when two potassiums are taken in? Yes, Taylor. Three sodium. Very good, Kayla. And we also discussed the membrane potential of the cell and a disease. Those who go brush your teeth. And a disease, glucose, galactose, malabsorption. When there is a problem with a co-transporter called SGLT1. And when this happens, it cannot bring glucose into the lumen of the intestines using secondary active transport. And I also forgot about our spicy local Indian dishes. Turmeric. This is very important. It is used in our food, in antibiotics, in skin creams, and many other things. Turmeric has something very important in it called curcumin. This is inserted into the cell membrane. And you know what it does? Can anybody tell me? It makes it more orderly. This improves the cell's resistance to infection and malignancy. I really understand everything now. I'm going to... I'm going to say 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 I'm going